Hello, Lisa. Hi, we Carrie. We're back again and talking about um, child services, child protection. I know in different provinces, they're all different names, so. Right, could be uh, child protection, social services, children's aid society. Right, they all fall under different acts like Child and Family Services Act, the Youth Protection Act, but you're right, they're very general, or very similar from mm -hmm. province to province, what the mandate is. Right. Yeah. And so we're looking at um, that involving homeschooling families and uh, how that situation works with them when they get, you know, it might be a knock at the door or they get a, a call or a phone message left and yes, what do they need to, to be do? Every family's biggest fear, yes. you know, to have that, have their parenting audited like that by the state. And it's a very stressful uh, situation to be in. but. You know, it's great when our members call us as soon as they've been contacted by a child protection service or a CPS. And, uh, and I can, you know, learn about their family dynamics, what's gone on, and, and help them be prepared for what to expect. And that's, we want to say, certainly call us. Like, don't feel that we're not there for you right. in this situation. Even if, even if the initial contact is it homeschool related per se? We still encourage you, our members, to call. Um, it could develop into a homeschool related matter, right. but uh, but at least initially, we want to offer our members support in this, help educate them, and prepare them. Okay. And so, if we get a call from someone who is in that situation, uh, I know we get as many details as we can, and then I refer that on to you. So, what happens then when you? when you take that initial call with them. Right, so I wanna, I wanna know about the family background, how many kids are in the family, what's their approach to homeschooling, etc. And then I, I talk to them about, this is what they're gonna look for. And yes, they do have to, if they've been contacted, they have an obligation to complete their investigation. Right. So they have to follow through on that initial yes. call that right. somebody's made against them. Right. So. Um, hopefully they don't just show up at your door. They, they usually will only do that if they haven't got a means of contacting any other a phone number or like on. But, uh, and we always encourage people, you know, don't feel pressured to let them conduct that investigation on the spot like that. Be okay. polite, be cooperative. It's unlikely going to be a good time for you. You're probably right. in the middle of a lesson or on your way out the door for something. Ask them to come back and set up a date. You know, in so a there's of no days. problem saying this is not a convenient time. Can we do exactly. this? Exactly. I mean, okay. it shouldn't be right. And they so they make would they give you then a time frame to say well yeah that's fine but we need to talk to you right within, within seven days, days or, or five something. yeah depending yeah. on the severity okay. of the complaint yeah and uh, and I suppose you know if somebody's really being pressured at the door mm -hmm. they call us just you know, excuse themselves and get in touch with us right then just so we can give you, still give them some support and, okay. uh, and maybe head off, you know, a, an otherwise disastrous situation. <laughs> right, right. So what are um, some things then that we would share with our members as to what to look for well, at that? First of all, I would um, assure them that, you know, the, the goal is to keep families together. Right. Um, you know, the for fear sure. that your children will be removed from the home, you know, it needs yeah, to be Yeah, that's a big fear, away. right? They're going to come in and take my kids away. Right. Oh, yeah. And, and again, no matter what the complaint was about, they're going to, the social worker or the child protection worker mm -hmm. is going to be looking for some general things, like what's the state of the home in, okay? They're not looking to see that people are perfect right. homemakers, yes. but are there any safety issues? Uh, are there electrical outlets exposed? Is there rotting food that a young child could get sick from? Um, are diapers disposed of? Are there animal feces in the house? Right. Mm -hmm. um, are there appropriate books and toys available for the children, you know, age appropriate? Right. They're looking for those sorts of yeah. things. So uh, not like you're confining them in a room behind exactly. a door. Exactly. Yeah. You know, did the children each have a bed to sleep in? Uh, so they're looking for those sorts of issues. They will be concerned about discipline in the home. Mm -hmm. So I, I often talk to people about the whole, you know, spanking issue. Right. Um, there certainly are parameters around that that we, we want to talk about. Uh, they're looking for, um, they may, may be concerned about the education component. More and more social workers are very accepting of homeschooling. Mm -hmm. That always gives people a lot of confidence right. that yeah. uh, they're not 
they're not you know doing anything illegal and it's a, a valid education option what the social workers are concerned to know is are are your children involved in things outside of the home right like are you part of a bigger community of homeschoolers or a sporting community or a community of faith um, right. That they're not just sequestered yeah. in the home. So they're getting out and they're getting out socializing. Not just for the children, but yes. for the parents, parents. Because what happens when there's a stressor in the home? Right. Parents need friends, uh, family members, counselors. They need to be out there as well, where there's a place for them to vent or get feedback. Mm -hmm. um, so when your family is integrated in the larger community, that's a good thing in the social worker's eyes. Good, good. So it's just making sure that they get in touch with us regardless if it's homeschooling or not. Yes. And uh, and we can certainly pass them on to you. Right. Who will deal. Help, just help our families them. understand that, you know, yes, they need to be cooperative mm -hmm. and, and it's best to be pleasant with the social workers. And uh, usually these matters are dealt with with one visit. Great. That's good to know. Just one visit, I'm sure, makes people feel a little yeah. bit easier and it's not a long-term right. thing. So, so our uh, part two of this series will be what happens if it's more than one visit. Right. Okay, <laughs> great.